Hello, I'm Emiliana de Tancur, and for this video, we will touch upon the subject of internalized sexism. We will analyze it through the guidance of experts and the inspiration of movies such as Mean Girls and The Intern. This phenomenon was recognized during the second wave of feminism when women realized that the social constructs holding them back were once not just established by men, but also by other women as well. Learned biases that have struck in our minds and rule the subconscious, convincing women to follow the expectations of patriarchal society. To further understand this issue, I have taken the article, The Ten Signs of Internalized Sexism and Gaslighting, written by Preston Nee, an expert in human resources who has actually coached companies such as Microsoft and Visa and written books known as How to Communicate Effectively and Handle Difficult People and Communication Success with Four Personality Types. You may be wary of a man reading an issue on internalized sexism. He may not seem like the best source to write about unconscious bias amongst women. However, taking into account that this issue does pertain to subconscious bias, the best angle of vision might, as, might be one with an outside perspective. He begins the article with examples of sexist statements said by women in famous works such as Stand and Deliver and Love Actually. Continuing to define internalized sexism as the tendency of some women to regularly put down this make disparaging remarks about and or sabotage their own or other women's and girls identity and potential for success. Recognizing that, significantly, one of the most common expressions of internalized sexism is one when some women routinely attack or trash other girls to marginalize their selfhood and power. Anyhow, in his article published by Psychology Today, he lists specific examples of internalized sexism that I will apply to the movies Mean Girls and The Intern in order to put into context. First and foremost, let me explain the base of these movies. Mean Girls was released in 2004 and it's a high school satire directed by Mark Waters, written by Tina Fey and Rose Rosalind Wiseman. It touches upon the dark realities of being a teenage girl. The interesting aspect of the movie is the portrayal of the angle of the newcomer Katie Heron, our protagonist, who grows up outside from who grows up isolated from society and is thrusted into high school. We see her direct reaction to the exposure of toxic relationships between teenage girls, demonstrating the negative impact it can have on anybody. The Intern, released in 2015, this hurtful dramedy written and directed by Nancy Mayers, stars Anne Hathaway as a founder who struggles to balance her full being a full-time boss and being a mother, portrayed from the eyes of a new hire, 17-year-old Robert De Niro, who is shocked by the continuous mistreatments amongst fellow women towards each other, specifically working moms. As for the audiences of these movies, they are both PG-13. So they appeal to a wide population. Mean Girls is mostly directed towards women since it follows the premise of high school girls. However, The Intern is a, has a broader audience because it bases itself in a work environment containing major actors such as Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway to appeal to all ages and all sexes. Therefore, I will demonstrate the effect of rhetoric upon the movement specifically in the realization of internalized misogyny by highlighting the signs Preston Lee has indicated for us in the movies Mean Girls by Tina Fey and Rosalind Wiseman and The Intern by Nancy Mayers. Please, I hate my cats. At you guys can wear halters. I've got man shoulders. I used to think there was just fat and skinny. Apparently there's a lot of things that can be wrong on your body. I'm here at 11, I get back at 7, I sleep like 5 hours a night, and now I'm gonna get fat? Ugh, I haven't looked at that in forever. Here, check it out, Katie. It's our burn book. So we cut out girls' pictures from the yearbook, and then we wrote comments. Trang Pack is a grotsky little biatch. Still true. Don Schweitzer is a fat virgin. Still have to. Studying women <laughs> under 40 who sleep less than six hours a night. And what'd you find out? It's interesting. Seems like they're 38% more likely to experience major weight gain compared to women who slept seven hours a night. Are you kidding me? You know I haven't slept in two years. Well, I can't change the facts. Don Schweitzer has a huge ass? Who would write that? Who wouldn't write that? Hey, Hi. nice to see you here. Uh, I'm not sure if you got our email, but we're doing a fiesta lunch next Friday, and we thought you could bring the guacamole. Ah. Uh, you probably won't have time to make it, so you can buy it which is fine. <laughs> Enough for 18. <laughs> no, I can make it. It's not a problem. Great. Matt can bring it. Totally. <laughs> Bye. How could Janice hate Regina? She was such a good... <gasps> 
slut! I hated Regina. I hated her. Look, she's not gonna get away with this again, okay? We're gonna do something. We are. Regina George is an evil dictator. Now, how do you overthrow a dictator? You cut off her resources. Regina would be nothing without her high-status man candy, technically good physique, an ignorant band of loyal followers. Oh, are you Matt's dad? No, no, I work for Joe's. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> I just thought she'd, you know, kind of tough. Tough? Sure, sure. She's a total badass. I guess that's how she became an internet sensation. Must make you guys proud, huh? One of your own out there every day, crashing the glass ceiling of the tech world. So bravo, good for her, right? Uh, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> Janice Ian Dyke. Movies such as these represent the toxicity that relationships between women can result in. They deliver the message of internalized racism in a subtle manner, not labeling the issue directly, but addressing its reality. As more women begin to realize these facts and understand their positions, clear definitions arise. Now, leading women have begun to speak on such issues to change the twisted perception. For instance, Kristen Pressner, who held a tech talk by a conscious prejudice towards women called are you biased? I am. The tech talk proves how the conversation has evolved. She mentions how the understanding of internalized sexism is backed up by scientific data, validating the concept. Kristen shows great ethos by stating that this bias is demonstrated by everyone, telling an anecdote where ironically she caught herself being biased towards other female leaders. She encourages the audience to do an exercise to test their bias and prevent it from continuing. She is removing the color tint from the glasses. All in all, with the use of the four ad artifacts I mentioned in this video, the conversation of internalized sexism is proved to be a conspicuous aspect of female daily life. The use of these movies allows for the implications of this problem to be set up in real life situations and, and the articles like that of Preston Nee enables women to check their behaviors in the future. Overall, I hope this video's outlining of internalized misogyny plants a seed in all of your heads, improving the way we women treat each other by opening our minds to new perspectives. Thank you so much for your time.